Today, we're talking about what separates a good player in Smite from a bad player and how you can improve as a player and become a good player. A little disclaimer is needed here. This is obviously speaking from my own perspective. I think there are certain aspects that are important for being a good player, but these aspects can at least to some degree differ depending on who you are asking. So this is my take on this and it should be taken as such. With that out of the way, let us jump into the points that I think are important for being a good player. I think there are three pillars that really define you as a good player or that will allow you to become a good player, whereas there are some other aspects that are, well, less relevant or somewhat tied with these points and they are worth mentioning, but they don't take over a primary role. The first pillar is game knowledge. This one is just understanding the game as a whole, knowing about items, knowing about abilities and so on, and just having the information necessary to perform well in a game and not suddenly be surprised by what an ability can do. The next point is mechanical skill. I think this point is not quite as important in Smite as in some other games, for example shooter games where you have to have very very good aim and have to be ultra precise compared to Smite where precision is needed more than in another MOBA for example, but it's not the key factor above anything else and that's why you for example see players switch between console and the PC and PC players perform very well on console or console players coming over and getting a grip of the PC meta relatively quickly simply because the mechanical skill between the two platforms is very different and you will not have the skill for the other platform immediately but because of game knowledge and other factors being a lot more important you can get away with not having the highest mechanical skill. As such this differs from for example shooter games where you would not easily switch between a controller and a mouse and keyboard. The third pillar is decision making. This one includes everything within the match when it comes to when to go for an objective, which fights to pick, when to maybe sacrifice someone in a wave or in a camp or something like that, and that all coming together. There are some more aspects, like I said, not the key points for me, but something that's worth mentioning. One of them being shot calling. This is very important if you have to shot call, either in a ranked game because no one else is doing it, or obviously in a competitive match where you need a shot caller. The point here is that not everyone on the team should shot call, but one or two people. So for those it's important, for the other ones it's not. The other point is map awareness. Now I think that this somewhat plays into decision making because you have to have good map awareness to have good decision making, but it could also be a standalone point. And as such, I mentioned it again, map awareness simply know, seeing what's going on in the map at any point and knowing what's going to happen where an enemy could come from, for example. Now that we talked about the different aspects that exist, let's get into how you can improve in the different categories, starting with game knowledge. Game knowledge is very obvious. First of all, you should read. You should read ability descriptions, you should read ability timers, you should know those ideally. You should read about the game surrounding information on meta changes and similar things. So there's a lot you could just read up on. Once again, timers are especially important here, but they're also the hardest thing to learn. If you know how long an enemy's ability is on cooldown, it will make the fight against them much easier, but it really, really is difficult to learn all the timers for all the abilities. And sometimes you will just have to, you know, do it by feel. Most pros know the timers, but I'm not exactly sure if every pro would know every time, I actually doubt it. Aside of that, there are obviously tutorials and guides, such as on this channel for example, or you could watch streams. There are obviously pro player streams as well, who will usually give you a lot of game knowledge, not necessarily directly, but by simply watching and learning from what they're doing, what they're building. So there's a lot to learn that way. And obviously, by playing the game yourself, you also increase your game knowledge. The next point is mechanical skill. Now, mechanical skill, I would say, is primarily increased by playing the game yourself. You can watch other people as much as you want, it's not gonna increase your own mechanical skill using the mouse better. 
There are tools to do that outside of just playing the game. You could, for example, use uh, something like an aim booster, like a website where you can practice your aim. But I don't think this does too much for Smite. Once again, this is something that is usually more targeted towards shooter audiences, and it doesn't really do as much for you in Smite, because aiming really isn't the hardest part. It's more timing the abilities, timing your relics by predicting when the enemy will attack you or CC you, so you don't waste any time on that. Practicing to probably aim with the hunter, for example, that you are playing, because they have different basic attacks, and so you should get used to that. As such, it's, it's probably helpful if you, for example, play hunters to practice click shooting instead of just holding down your mouse, clicking for an individual shot. There are many ways to improve, depending on which character you're playing as well. But, once again, the main point here is playing yourself. Another factor that many people underestimate when it comes to mechanical skill is being healthy and awake. And no, this is not a joke. Many orcs encourage their pro players to regularly work out in order to stay fit. And staying fit is really important for having the best reaction time possible, as such translates into your mechanical skill, and as does everything else surrounding it. Having good nutrition, sleeping enough, all of that. Now, obviously, if you're a casual player that's just looking to improve a little bit, you don't have to have a strict diet or something like that, but it definitely doesn't do any harm to get some regular physical exercise, maybe do some hand stretches before playing and things like that. You're also bound to perform worse if you don't get enough sleep or play for too long in a row. There's nothing that necessarily has to bother you if you don't mind it, but know that if you want to perform at your peak performance, all those things have to be considered. And with that, we're getting to the third point, to decision making. Improving decision making is probably the hardest out of the three, simply because you can't really read up on it, there's no simple practice for it, and a lot of it happens in game. So once again, the most important aspect is probably playing the game. You will make better decisions when you play the game longer and know what is gonna happen under certain circumstances. You also are able to make better decisions when you have better game knowledge when it comes to timers and stuff like that. So that obviously helps in that regard as well. Another thing you can do is rewatch your own plays if you have any games that you can spectate. Especially those games where you lost are the ones that you should focus on. You can really look in which places you could improve where you feel like that you, for example, didn't play aggressive enough, that you didn't emphasize an objective when you should have, when you went for an objective while you shouldn't have, and anything along those lines. Ideally, judging this from your own replays. For some players, it's relatively hard to get replays, so that's not always an option. Maybe you can get one of your friends to spectate you from time to time, if you're really looking to improve in that regard. Another option here is obviously watching pro players. They have played the game for a long time and they've had to make lots and lots of decisions, so their decision making is usually very, very good. And copying what they are doing or trying to understand what they are doing helps with that. Maybe sometimes in that regard it's best to mute the stream and try to figure out why they're doing things without having their commentary and just really focus on why they're going where in specific places. Maybe take some notes and then check back with the stream after to hear what the pro himself said about what he did. A great option to improve while in the game is reflecting on your own decisions upon death. When you die, you most likely have done something wrong. Even if it's a 4-5 man rotation on you, then you most likely haven't warded enough and you most likely didn't follow your team's calls, you didn't check the map, anything along those lines. So even in those situations, there was probably at least some degree of mistake on your end. And when you die, then you have time to think about why exactly you died there, what you did wrong and what you could improve in your decision making the next time you're in a similar situation. This is something you can easily turn into a routine, instead of just tabbing out when you die, try to figure out what you did wrong, and I think it's probably the easiest way to improve on your personal level in a relatively short amount of time, because you have to go through this process whenever you die anyways, you have to do something while you're dead, and you will die if you make wrong decisions. And that brings us to the extra points. The first one being shot calling. The best way to practice shot calling in normal matches is practice the VGS. If you use the VGS very frequently, that will help you to get better with doing the right shot calls in the heat of the moment. 
Also, when you feel confident with short calling and you think you can actually try it out for yourself, then make the calls and see how they affect the overall game. See if the calls you're doing are effective ones, if they actually get you the goal that you want to achieve, if people are following, and if not, what you could change about that. This is obviously a whole different story in an actual team. I'm just not going to go into detail here because really that's something you have to practice within that team. Or if you're on voice comes with the team that actually make the shot call very different as well. Last but not least, there is map awareness. The one thing that I would always recommend when it comes to improving your own map awareness is get yourself some sort of a loop timer that notifies you to look at the map at every so many seconds, maybe seven seconds, and get that to become a habit for yourself through this timer so that you eventually don't need the timer anymore and you will just frequently check the minimap anyways. That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any more tips that you think would help people improve, please feel free to drop them down below. Also, if you enjoyed this content and you're not subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. Maybe click that bell, maybe click the like button or anything like that. I'll see you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.